Hi guys, welcome to my second Writing Fiction 101 video. Um, I just wanted to make a few disclaimers because I did forget to mention a few points when I recorded, so hence why there's no recording now. Um, but I just wanted to like make this really important disclaimer that you don't have to buy books to learn a particular subject or topic that is relevant for your novel like you can search up that topic whatever it is on the internet although you might not find extensive amount of information about that particular topic it really depends on what it is um, so it depends on like what that subject is personally I just managed, I was lucky enough to find books in um, in certain stores, in certain bookstores, so that were relevant to my novel, which is why I bought them, and um, there was certain information online that I just couldn't find. I did find some information online, but um, I, I took the splurge, um, but you know, like, uh, it really depends on, like, if you're more of a book reader or what type of subjects what type of topics you need to learn for your novel um, so if you're studying medicine for example I would suggest actually buying a book I don't think you'd find much on like finding out medical terms or like actual procedures to be performed for an injury online you might find it but like I would personally buy a book if I was to study medicine extensively or something. Um, if you are writing about a particular historical period, you probably might want to buy a historical book. It really depends. Like you can find all sorts of information online. It's really up to you. Um, don't splurge though. Don't buy too many books. <laughs> um, I tried to not buy too many but there was just so many different things to like learn about um, and I didn't buy it all at once I just wanted to make that clear I bought it like once every few months like just bit by bit so don't go overboard um, and also another thing don't think that just because you have to research on a particular subject that you have to know every single thing about that subject you don't you just need to know some the basics or i don't know it really depends on your novel um like if you if your main character is a detective you're going to need to know crime procedures police procedures how um how being a detective actually works, how you, how you solve crimes, um, if you're writing about a particular historical period, for example, you need to know what the, what the males and females wore of that time, and um, what were the common jobs back in that time, and how people spoke, um, the different social classes, and social hierarchy, stuff like that. Um, so that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that you have to buy books. You really don't. But um, I just thought that it'd be, it'd be it'd be helpful to like just like open up uh, the mind that you know there's a lot to learn. I'm I'm just someone who wants to who wanted to learn more. Um, so that's all. Um, so I just hope this video came useful for anyone came at least a bit useful for anyone who is planning to write a novel um so yeah uh enjoy the video hi guys welcome to my second writing fiction 101 video where i'll be talking about doing research for a novel so in the first writing fiction 101 video i talked about how i bought some books to understand story structure and how to plan and outline your novel so if you haven't already you can check out the first video i did make that like a few months ago so i apologize for this for the lateness of this particular video and in this particular video i'll be talking about the research research that I've done for my novel and also talk about the importance of doing your research before you start writing your novel. So uh, what is research? Uh, re research is um, studying on a particular topic, subject that your novel 
is based on centers around that topic so for example uh in my novel uh, it's a fantasy adventure novel so i've been studying how castles are formed and the different parts of a castle uh, i've been studying on gemstones and the magical property of gemstones and i've been studying um on like first aid for bushcraft um and also like um researching on greek mythology etc so um, i'm just going to show you the books that i've bought um the problem with me is that when i go into a bookstore and i find something that is very interesting to me um that might help my novel i will buy it Pr most probably i will and i ended up buying two books on gemstones when i could have bought one but anyway i'll just show you the books that i've bought so first one is bushcraft first aid a field guide to wilderness emergency care and it's by dave canterbury now i will put a link to all of the books um in the description so if you're interested if you need to do your novel research then um and if any of these topics are particularly important for your novel then do check them out so the importance of okay i'll just first talk about why it's important to um do your research so with research um it, it will help you to understand some of the processes that might happen in your novel so for example if you have a character who is a medic a doctor or a nurse um you will need to understand some just like the basic medical procedures at least depending on like if they're a main character or a secondary character if they're a main character you might have to like learn a bit more about like just medicine and like how to treat certain injuries um stuff like that so um in this book um it, there's a passage about uh, i'm just gonna talk uh i mean it, it has everything like any sort of injury injuries that you might have in a forest setting particularly so it is forest based um so, uh, so the most important aspect of treating a snake bite is to attempt to get as much of the poison out of the victim's body as possible and the way to do that is to suction the bite with a sawyer extractor i'm literally reading it off from this so um yeah like that is so important to make sure that you treat the symptoms of an injury as quick as possible especially if it's venom some sort of poison inside the body um, so it, it was a very useful read so I highly recommend this I mean just in general if you want if you're someone who goes out a lot especially like in forest orienteering or hiking whatever then this will be useful you useful you for you because you know it's, there's no hospitals <laughs> near forests kind of areas so um yeah uh highly recommend this book and it also has um a section on like the different plants and herbs that you can find in forests that can actually heal um your any sort of like injury um so for example um there's something on so here it says that white pine white pine is a type of so the easiest way to identify white pine is by its clusters of five needles. Um, it's a type of plant. Oh, is it a plant? No, it's a tree. The needles, which can be easily made into a herbal tea, provide high amounts of vitamin C to strengthen the immune system. The sap, frequently referred to as pitch or resin, is both antibacterial and antifungal. It also works to stop bleeding, seal wounds, and draw out things that shouldn't be there, such as pus or splinters. So, um, this is like multi-purpose healer. Um, and also, I highly recommend talking about yarrow as well, since yarrow is also one of the best herbs to um, seal wounds and has anti-inflammatory purposes call me a geek but seriously this stuff is just interesting to learn about herbal healing herbal medicine also it's interesting to learn about gemstones a crystal healer now i'm not into that 
magical shit okay so don't get the wrong idea this this is solely to um for my novel because it is heavily based on gemstones um without spoiling of course but um with gemstones so i learned that with crystals crystals they contain a lot of light energy and it, it actually has um the, the um the quartz crystal in particular has a piezoelectric piezoelectric effect and what that means is that if you if you um if you squeeze a crystal light will be generated from it so you'll be able to get light from those crystals if you squeeze them rub them or um i think just like hit them somewhere i think um so it was interesting learning about the different properties of gemstones and their f magical effects obviously i don't believe that they are magical but you know it's, it's quite interesting um especially considering that um you know in a fancy adventure fancy novel um you you know there's a lot of like different um it's a common trope to have like jewellery having magical properties attached to them or something like that um so uh, so here it says that crystals have also been shown to hold both heat and electricity and to focus light energy these special properties of crystals have numerous practical applications from the use of quartz crystals in watches to the development of lasers now according to this book it says that crystal healing is about change it involves working with crystals to improve your physical and mental health your emotional well-being and your spiritual advancement so crystals can't actually do the impossible like actually physically heal your body but they can like um just give it a boost um because you know mental health is very very important just as much as physical health and i also learned about the chakra system so in um i think hinduism in particular they believe that um correct me if i'm wrong though but like there are there are the crown chakra the brow chakra the throat chakra the heart chakra the solar plexus chakra the sacral chakra and the base chakra so there are seven chakras in total in the spiritual body and what they do is that you do need to balance all of those chakras and it can be quite difficult but um to associate each of the chakras the base chakra is associated with survival and health sacral chakra is associated with creativity and energy storage and solar plexus chakra is to do with personal power emotional control combating fears heart chakra is to do with safety and love Throat chakra is to do with communication, brow chakra is to do with psychic abilities and the mind. So if you really want to train your brow chakra, you'll be able to um, gain psychic abilities. Um, crown, crown chakra is to do with spirituality, connection, imagination and awareness. So, um, and there's like different gemstones that are particularly associated with a particular type of chakra so for example the carnelian gemstone is most associated and can actually help the sacral chakra in particular so if you have a problem with a sacral chakra you might want to use a carnelian or if you have a problem with the solar plexus chakra if you have a problem balancing it then you can use a citrine or a sunstone um i don't believe just to like confirm i don't believe stuff like this but it is useful knowledge for my novel um i can't say why and how but you know um it's just you it's just so fascinating like they're so beautiful these gemstones they are um and i also bought crystal basics i bought this one first but i thought that this was a bit too basic for me so i bought this one um so this one 
So this one talks about how different colors have like different uh, properties to them. So if you want, you can have a red crystal, like a red jasper or bloodstone to increase your power, passion, courage and physical energy. If you want an orange crystal, the orange crystal can enhance your self-esteem. Um, pink crystal can foster in kindness, love and compassion for yourself and others, etc, etc. Um, it talks about like healing crystals, um, cleansing them, because crystals they do actually need to be cleansed by either putting it in the sunlight or the moonlight or washing it. Um, so to actually get the effects from the crystal to actually make it work because you can't have a dirty crystal if you have a dirty crystal it most likely won't work as well and this book okay so this one I just found it in my house lying around and I believe my sister bought this for for students um, but this was a really fascinating read. Who? What were castles for? So, like in medieval times, a lot of castles were made for kings and queens. Um, and obviously there are still castles nowadays. Um, and the reason I need to search for this is because there is a royal family in my novel. Um, so I need to know the different parts of a castle and it's a really fascinating read. I know it's a kids book but I learned so much from this because it's so simplistic and it's so easy to understand and absorb all the information. So um, what I learned was that usually castles were built up on a hill to um, prevent enemies from attacking um, the the um the castle that's like right high up in the hill and it, and there'd usually be a moat around the castle because that would help um intruders that would stop the the intruders from entering the castle since there's a whole ditch of water around the castle um obviously there's still an entrance to get to the castle but that entrance is so heavily guarded and secured and it's known as the gatehouse the gatehouse is um is literally on the drawbridge so the drawbridge is where you can enter the castle um and it was also interesting to learn that the royal family, back in those days at least, the kings and queens would actually be staying in one particular part of the castle and that is known as the keep. The keep is the strongest part of the castle and that is why it is the best place for a king or queen to stay in. So it was quite fascinating to read about that. It's just... It's, it is fascinating, it's, it's interesting to learn about how, like, you know, like, how intruders can get in. Because it, it was so hard, there were, like, so many knights and guards to keep a watch out for intruders, enemies, um, that could um, get into the castle. Um, but the keep was the strongest part of the castle, and is the biggest part of the castle, I believe, as well. Um, so yeah, and there's also a chapter on how uh, castles were defended. So the castle would have battlements, high stone walls, small windows for soldiers to hide behind and um, obviously the deep moat, the moat is the ditch, the water that's around the castle that was also designed to like um, stop, to prevent um, intruders from entering the castle. Especially back in those days where m most men weren't as great swimmers, I guess. So the battlements were specifically designed to help soldiers fight the enemies that were attacking. So battlements, they were like these large towers, the, like the tower parts of the castle. Like the places that were used to like cover soldiers, it was easier and the arrow slits so if there were like archers as well they'd be able to easily attack the enemies because of those arrow slits and those covers I can't quite explain it I think they're called the machiculations um, so I just put like a picture here to like represent what I'm talking about um, so it was just I mean still there were so many ways to add 
to actually um, intrude a castle. <clears throat> For example, you could have used a battering ram, this huge... I mean, if you watch The Lord of the Rings, you know just like how many different ways the orcs managed to get into the castle of Rohan. It was crazy in that film. <laughs> I love that trilogy. Um, anyway, um, so the battering ram, you could easily like break the um, the gatehouse to get into the castle. Um, but I don't know if realistically that happened, um, if that was very successful. I'm not a historian, so um, you know, don't take my word for it. Okay, so enough from that book. Also, because I really do want to design my own fantasy world map, because um, because my world, my novel, is is based mainly in a, in a world that is not the real world. So it's a completely made up fictional world, um, and the world is called Lapis. And um, so I just, I bought this book, how to draw fantasy art. And, RPG maps. I, I bought this to like um, draw my own fancy map. Obviously, not probably not perfectly at all, but just like it, just to know where everything is. Um, I'm not expecting to like make a beautiful map or anything. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna hire someone to do that for me, but just to like start myself off with like a nice enough just to like know where everything is that's all i really care about rather than aesthetically making it look as beautiful as possible um if because i'm going through like traditional publishing my traditional pro publisher will probably get a designer to do that for me anyway um but i wanted to buy this to get ideas about what else i need to include like towns cities like how to properly place them because you really do need to make a plausible map if you are making a fictional fantasy world in your novel um so for example you can't place rivers right next to deserts otherwise people will think you're a fucking idiot <laughs> i'm sorry but like seriously like that's not how it works unless like you there's like a magic to make it all sense like if you can explain it by saying that there's a magic that is allowing the desert to be right next to a river unless it's an oasis if there's an oasis obviously an oasis is in a desert um that works but don't have vegetation right next to a desert no desert has very very little vegetation and precipitation vegetation is basically forest grass greenery all of that needs water and water a river can be right next to a forest um but a forest greenery at all cannot really be next to a desert no and rivers are what um and the rivers are formed from the mountains so mountains they actually need to have like rivers flowing out of them so um that's how the rivers are made the rivers and water in general comes from mountains just throwing it out there i also bought uh the illustrated a to z of classic mythology this is mainly about greek and norse mythology i believe greek the legends of ancient greece rome and the norse and celtic worlds to be honest i did not find this book that helpful for my particular novel i believe it would be helpful if you're specifically going to um write about greek gods and goddesses or something like that uh, or anything from classic mythology um but it was a pretty interesting read the reason why i'm covering this bit is because it has a naked woman and i feel a little bit uncomfortable showing the naked woman here um but anyway um but yeah i mean there's so much to it though and there's a lot of pictures so you might get ideas from pictures um but to be honest there's some really messed up stories in this um well if you know 
Greek mythology. There are some really messed up stories, but anyway, um, yeah, that's that. I don't know why I bought this. Fancy art templates. Um, so, like I said, so, sometimes I go into the bookstore. It's actually The Works. <laughs> the Works is a bookstore in the UK, and it, it always has, like, these really interesting spiritual based books or like anything to do with um drawing art arts and crafts it's an arts and crafts and stationery type of shop um and it's an awesome shop so i highly recommend it if you're in the uk um and it's just ready-made artwork i guess just for inspiration i bought it um so it just shows you how to make uh techno mages um bandits and pirates um, sorcerers and elves etc all types of like mythical creatures so that's that and i bought this for world building purposes uh ultimate travel coloring book um so i'm not really going to actually color it but i wanted to get ideas of how my places how my locations in my novel series are going to look like because to be honest i don't travel much in real life to like get ideas from like where i've personally been to i mean sometimes i do but like um just like to get ideas like i'll show you some beautiful images taj mahal is right here and um it's like a pyramid place and a zoo place Oh, this is beautiful. Like, the drawing in these are just beautiful. So, this is in Italy. And some hot air balloons. So, um, yeah. Um, lots of interesting, beautiful drawings in this colouring books. And, yes, I will have the links to all of the books that I just showed. And I also bought um, The Walker's Guide to Outdoor Clues and Signs. So, to, like, get ideas about, like, how to track animal footprints in forests stuff like that but to be honest this book was so damn useless so i don't recommend it it was just so boring i was not getting i was just not learning at all like barely learning anything i guess because i don't know much about forests anyway but like bro just get to the point i was just like oh. anyway um so I don't recommend that book, but I recommend everything else though. Um, it depends on like really what your novel is about. So the whole point of um, doing research on a novel is so that you don't sound ignorant or naive. So like you don't want to get your facts wrong. You do need to like learn at least something. You don't need to do extensive research. It really depends on the type of novel that you're that you're writing so if you're writing a historical fiction you are going to need to do historical research into the actual place that your novel is based in so if you want to talk about if your your characters are part of the Tudor times or Shakespearean times you're gonna to have to do research on <clears throat> the Shakespearean period to see how people dressed how people acted what the common beliefs were the context of that particular era um, so yeah um, and like what the common medical practice practices were if that's relevant I don't know um, but yeah you uh, you do need to do some sort of research so um, I hope that this um, this was just to like um, inspire you guys really um i don't know whatever you, like just to like if you um i just wanted to show you that i do like doing some research and it's to inspire writers out there that um uh if you want to read into these kind of topics i don't know for what whatever reasons whether this is a hobby or if you want to do this for your novel or for future novels if you're especially into fantasy novel writing then um yeah do check out those books um and you can give me recommendations too like if you do know any particular fantasy based book that you think might help me let me know in the comment section and um stay tuned for more